Today we're going to learn how to create a validation form using Ajax. And before we get into this episode, I'd like to argue about why we need to do it the way we're doing it in this episode compared to other ways I've seen people do it on the internet. So when it comes to creating a validation form using something like jQuery or Ajax or JavaScript, it's very important to think about safety when you do it. Now, if I were to just take some kind of form like the one I have here, which basically just sends an email, so essentially this is a contact form. If I were to not fill in any kind of information like I have here and just click send email, we want to get some kind of error message. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this, either using jQuery or Ajax or whatever method we might decide to use, but some are better than others. Now, the way I decided to do it in this episode is by combining PHP with jQuery or JavaScript. Because we want to validate a form, we need to do it using some kind of backend language. Now, the reason for this is that if I were to take a look at this for security reasons, I can actually inside my browser, right click on any kind of element inside a website, inspect it, and then use the built-in developer tool inside any kind of browser and change some of the front end code directly inside the browser. So I could essentially go inside my head tag here where I have my JavaScript code or jQuery code and change some of the information. So it's not safe to only use jQuery for validation when you have a form, okay? So it's very important to use some kind of backend language to do this as well. Now, in this episode, we're gonna learn how to create this form here. And what we're gonna do is basically just learn how to figure out if people actually type something in, if they didn't type in a valid email, if it were to just write something that's not really a valid email and just click send. You guys can see we now get this highlighted error message that says this is not a valid email address. And if I were to actually write something that's actually valid, like so, and actually send it, then you guys can see we get everything cleared and we get a email has been sent confirmation message. Now the validation we're gonna do in this episode is gonna be something you can apply to anything that you might build using any kind of form. Like if you want to have a sign up or login form inside a website, or some other kind of contact form. You can do any kind of forms and do this sort of validation with it. So we're gonna learn how to do this using Ajax. So we don't have to refresh the browser each time you want to do this, which is something that's very nice to do. Maybe not using a contact form, but using, for example, a login system. And again, it's the same concept. So you can take what we do in this episode and apply it to any kind of form you might have inside your website. So what we're gonna do here is, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you guys to download the style sheet in the description of this video, because as you guys can see, I did actually style the form already. So we have something that doesn't look like, you know, complete technical. So we just have something that's a bit nice to look at. So once you have the styling and insert it inside your root folder, your website, there's one more thing you guys need to do. Now, the second thing you guys need to have, which I just want to mention, because I see some people just jump directly into this episode without actually having seen the first Ajax tutorials, is that you guys need to have a local server or an online server if you want this to work. Because when you use Ajax or PHP code, you need to have your website inside a server. So you need to have this in order for this to work, okay? So what we need to do to start with is I'm gonna go ahead and open up a index file. So right now, as you guys can see, I have my style sheet here, which you guys have downloaded by now. And inside my index file, I have very little code besides the link to my style sheet and the script for my jQuery code, which is online somewhere. Then what we need to do down here is we need to actually create the contact form. And then afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and create the jQuery code or the Ajax code for it. And then we're gonna create the PHP code. So inside the body tags here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a form tag because we need to actually have a form in order to actually submit something. Now inside the form tag, we're gonna go ahead and create an input. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a text type inside the type attribute. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm just gonna set this one to name and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a placeholder just so we have some text inside the input before we actually write something. So I'm gonna say full name. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the next line, just copy the input, paste it down. And we still want to have some text in here, but I'm gonna change the name to email because we don't want to have the same name. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the placeholder to email, like so. Then the next thing we want to have here is a very basic select. And again, I'm just creating a couple of different types of inputs and selects and text areas. So you guys can see we can actually do this using Ajax together with a bunch of different form inputs. So I'm just gonna say we have a select, we have an option, 
inside this option, I'm going to go ahead and say mail, or I'm going to copy this down and say female, like so. And then we need to insert some attributes inside the select tag up here. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a name, which is set to gender. Then I'm going to go inside my option tags, say space, value, and set them equal to the same we have inside the options here. So I'm going to go ahead and say male and female, like so. The next thing we need to have is a text area. So I'm going to go down to the next line. I'm going to say we have a text area. And then inside the text area tag, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a name set to message. I'm going to go ahead and say we have a placeholder set to message or write your message here or something, just so the person actually knows what he needs to write inside the inputs. Then after this, we're going to go ahead and go down to the next line and we're going to go ahead and include a button. Inside the button, we can say send e mail and then we're going to go ahead and give the button a type set to submit and then we're going to go ahead and give it a name set to submit now what we're doing here is just basically setting up a very basic html form so you guys should know how to do this by now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go inside my form tag at the end here and i'm going to go ahead and set an action the action is going to be set to mail dot PHP because when we want to send this information to a document and actually do something with it, like checking if something is wrong, then we want to do it inside a separate file called mail.php. Then afterwards, we're going to set a method. We're going to set the method as a post method, like so. And before we end off the form, let's actually go ahead and create some space underneath the actual input. So we're going to go ahead and include a break underneath each of them, like so, like so and after the text area, like so. So now we have the basic HTML set up in order to actually you know, have a basic form inside our website. So if we were to go back inside the browser and if we were to just load up the actual file we have here, which look like this. This is what we just created inside our document. Now, right now it's actually not doing anything because I were to click, you guys can see we don't actually have any documents called mail.php and it doesn't really register any kind of error messages. So we need to do something to this form in order for this to actually work. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go back inside my index file. I want to get this form ready in order to actually do what we need to do with it using Ajax. Now, what I had in mind is if I were to go back inside the demo, which looks like this, is we want some kind of message to pop up when we do actually get something right or something wrong. So we're gonna go ahead and insert the container for this message. So when we do actually get some kind of message, we need to insert it inside a container. So we're gonna go ahead and create that inside our form. So if we were to go down below our button down here and create a very basic paragraph tag, I'm gonna go ahead and give this paragraph an ID and I'm gonna set this one to form dash message. So right now, all we need to do is when we do actually get some kind of error message or success message, when we do actually you know, type something and submit the form, we want to insert the message inside this empty paragraph down here, because right now, if we were to save it, go back inside the browser and actually refresh the proper form, you guys can see we still have nothing inside of here because right now we have no text inside the paragraph. So once we get to the part where we need to take the data we typed into all the inputs, and check if the user typed something wrong inside the input or if they did actually do it correctly. We need to be able to grab the data and see if the user actually did it correctly. And if they didn't, we need to do something to these inputs in order to actually style them a different way if the user were to do something wrong. So let's say I didn't type in a proper email address. Then I want to style this input that has the email input and make it some kind of red color to highlight that, you know, something went wrong here. So in order to do this and actually style these inputs individually, we need to give each input some kind of ID or class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside each input and I'm going to go ahead and insert some kind of ID. So I'm going to say like so. I'm going to say ID is equal to mail dash something. So inside the first one up here, which is the full name, I'm going to say it's called mail dash name. Inside the second one, which is the email, I'm going to say mail dash email and so on and so on and so on. So we're going to say gender for the next one. And the last one down here, which is the message, we're going to say message, like so. 
And we also need to include one down which says submit down here. So we need to say we have an ID, which is equal to mail dash submit, like so. So now we can actually target all these inputs and select them using jQuery or JavaScript. So what we need to do now is actually go up to the top here and include some kind of script that will actually get the data and use Ajax to actually load in the correct information depending on what the user typed in. So if I go right on top of my head closing tag, right after everything else inside the head tag, I'm gonna go ahead and include my script tags. Like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a selector that checks if we have loaded everything else inside the website using jQuery. So I'm gonna say we have a document. Then I'm gonna say dot ready, parentheses, semicolon. And then we're gonna create a anonymous function, parentheses, curly brackets. And then inside of here, we can actually include the code we need to use in order to check if we click the submit button inside our form. And then afterwards, what we need to do with the data in order to see if the user did it correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another selector that selects our form, like so. And again, if you guys have multiple forms inside your website, you should have some kind of unique ID for the form. So you can actually select the, the proper form. So afterwards here, I'm gonna go ahead and say dot submit. So now we're checking for a submit event, which is again, just when we click the submit button down there that has the type set to submit. And I'm gonna go and include another anonymous function inside the actual submit function we have here. Now, the first thing we need to do inside the submit function here is actually disable the default action that will actually happen once we do actually click the submit button. Because right now, if I were to actually click the submit button, it's gonna go ahead and run whatever code is up here. I want to disable that and do it using jQuery. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and create a events parameter inside the function. I'm gonna go down to the next line and reference to the same event and then say we want to disable it. So we're gonna go ahead and say prevent default parentheses. So basically what this does is that it goes in and says we take this current submit and disable whatever is going to happen based off the submit. So we're gonna disable the action and the method down here inside the form. Then we're gonna to go to the next line and actually get the data from all the inputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a variable, which is named as name, which is equal to the input we have inside, the data we have inside the first input down there. So we're gonna say we have a selector where I'm gonna go ahead and select the actual data from the input. And we do that by saying we want to select the ID that's down here called mail-name. So I'm gonna say hashtag mail-name. And then afterwards, we want to get the actual value by saying val parentheses. Then we just need to copy paste this a couple more times. So we have about five of them. And then we need to change the names in here. So we're gonna say the second was the email, like so. The third one was the gender. The fourth one was the message. And then the last one was to submit, like so. So now we have the actual data selected inside this event here. Then we can go to the next line and actually use the Ajax function we have inside jQuery and do something with the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a selector and I want to select whatever I need to insert the new data inside of, which in this case is form-message, which is the one we typed down here at the bottom here. And let's actually go ahead and create a class instead of an ID just to have it. And then go inside our select up here and say we have a class called form-message. And then we need to decide what kind of Ajax function we want to use inside jQuery. Now there's a couple of them to choose from and the one I decided to use in this episode just because it's easier is the load function. Now by going inside the load function, we then need to have a couple of parameters. So the first one is going to be the actual file that we want to load once we do actually submit the form. And again, that's gonna be the same file as we selected down here inside the action. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste it in. And then we want to add the second parameter, which is going to be the actual data that we need to pass on inside this document here. The data that we want to pass on is right up here because we already selected it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say comma, space, curly brackets. Then just to make sure it looks nice, I'm gonna move down to the next line. And inside the curly brackets, I want to say we have the first piece of data, which is called name. And again, this is the post method that is called name, which should be equal to 
the variable we created up here called name. Then I'm gonna say comma, next line, and just paste it in a couple more times. So again, we have five of them. Make sure you delete the last comma down here because you don't want to have a comma at the last one. And then we're gonna go ahead and change the names. So just gonna go ahead and paste them in like this. Like so, like so, and like so. And again, just to not confuse you guys, the first name here is the actual post name when we pass on the information to the next document. And this information on the right side is the actual value we got from inside the inputs, okay? Now, this is basically all we need to do in this document. So let's actually go ahead and save the document. And next, we need to create the actual document called mail.php, which we need to actually load when we click the submit button. So if I were to go inside a new document and save it inside my root folder as mail.php, now, the first thing I'm going to write inside the mail.php file is going to be a couple of PHP opening and closing tags in order for the browser to know that we're actually going to write PHP code. Now, this is very similar to when we write script tags using JavaScript or jQuery in order for the browser to know that this is actually jQuery or JavaScript code. Inside the PHP tags, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to check if we actually clicked the button inside our index file. And the way we do that is by creating a is set function inside the if statement, and then checking if we have a post method called submit. Now, I just want to mention again, the reason we're doing all this error handling inside the PHP file, not using JavaScript or jQuery, is because it's much more safe if you want to make sure that the user cannot go inside the browser and just manipulate the, the front end code and get around the, the error handlers. So we need to make sure we do this inside a PHP file, okay? So after we check if we did actually click the submit button, the next thing we need to do is actually get the rest of the actual post methods. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a variable called name. I'm gonna set it equal to dollar sign underscore post brackets. And then we want to get the post method called name. Now, the post method here that we got called name is not something we got from our form inside the front page. So if I were to go down to the form, you guys can see that we have the post method down here, which actually sends the information, but because inside the jQuery code, we prevented it from actually doing that and instead created our own variables down here using JavaScript, we managed to send in the post method using JavaScript instead of HTML. So just to make sure you guys actually know that the post method we're getting right now inside the file is from these variables we have inside our JavaScript code, okay? So if we were to go back inside mail.php, we're gonna go ahead and copy what we have here four more times, or just three more times because we don't need to get the submit up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the names again from name to email. Then we're gonna get gender, and then the message, like so. Underneath the actual post methods here, I'm gonna go ahead and set two more variables, which is going to be the ones that actually check if we had some kind of error message. So right now we want to have the first variable called error, empty, which is basically going to check if we have any kind of empty fields inside our form. So I'm gonna set this one to false as a default. Then I'm gonna copy and paste it and say we want to have a second error handler that checks if we have some kind of wrong email address, you know, something that is not a real email address. So I'm gonna say email, and that should also be equal to false. And then afterwards, we need to actually do the error handlers that goes in and checks if we have some kind of error message, such as if there was any kind of empty field. So if we were to write an if statement down here that says if empty, which is a PHP function that checks if something is not existing, I want to check if we do actually have this variable up here existing, because if I didn't type any kind of name inside my form, then this variable here is going to be completely empty and not have any kind of data inside of it. So if this one is empty, I want to get some kind of error message down here that says, for example, echo, which is the PHP version of writing text inside the browser. Then I want to say we have a span tag in HTML. And then I want to say fill in all fields. Then I want to close the span tag, which again is just basic HTML, like so. And just to make sure we style this correctly, because this is essentially an error message, I want this to be read. Inside my styles here, I did actually went ahead and said that any kind of styling that had the style as form error 
should be red. So I'm going to go ahead and include this class inside my span tags here. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a class equal to single quotes form dash error, like so. Then afterwards, what we need to do here is actually change the error empty variable up here to true because right now we did have an error message. So this one needs to be changed to true. Now, we don't just want to check for an empty name. We also want to check for, for example, an empty email or an empty message because we don't want to send an email if everything is empty. So inside the if statements parameters, we check for an empty name. I also want to check for an empty email. So we're going to say we have these vertical lines, which is the or statement inside PHP. And I want to check if we have an empty email, like so. And then the last one is going to be if we have an empty message, like so. Then after we check this, we need to also check if the user did not type a correct email address, you know, some kind of email address, which is a wrong format. So what we need to do is go down to the next line and write an else if statement. And then inside the condition down here, I'm going to say we have a PHP function called filter underscore var, which stands for variable parentheses. And then inside this function, I'm going to go ahead and say we have an email variable, which is up here, which is the actual email we got from the input and then say comma filter in capitalized letters underscore validate underscore email, which is a built in function inside PHP that actually checks if this email was a proper email format inside, you know, PHP. And then if it is a proper email format, it's going to go ahead and do whatever's inside the else if statement down here. Now, what I want to do is instead check if it's not a proper format. And I do that by writing an exclamation mark right before the actual function. So now if the email is not a proper format, it's going to go ahead and do what's inside the curly brackets here. So I'm going to go ahead and echo, or I could just copy what we have up here because it might be easier. Like so, I want to echo some kind of error message that says, write a valid email address. Like so. And after we did this, I want to go ahead and create an else statement because if none of these are actually true, then I want to actually say that, you know, everything was correct and I want to get a success message instead. So inside the else statement, I'm going to go ahead and again, just paste in the echo. And I want to change the class from form error to form success because inside my style sheet, I do have a styling for it where it turns the text green inside what we have here. So now fill in all fields will be green inside the form if we typed everything in correctly. Okay, so this is basically all we need to do with the PHP code. Well, we could actually do one more thing, which is if we did not submit anything, we could also have an error message for that. So let's just go below the last curly bracket we have inside the PHP file and say we have an else statement that says echo, there was an error in case the submit was not caught or something. So now what we need to do is once we're done with the PHP code here, write in some kind of script that actually lets the jQuery know if there was any kind of error messages, because right now we have some error messages up here that is going to be either true or false. And in case one of them are true, we want to show the user that something went wrong inside the form. So inside this document here at the bottom, below the PHP tags, I'm going to go and create a script tag. Now I can actually see we've got to do one more thing up here, which was include the actual error empty inside the else if statement down here, because we need to change not the error empty, but the error email to true in case this one down here actually went true. So inside the script tags, we need to actually get these error email and error empty and see if they were true or false at the end of the script here. So inside the script tags, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable, which I'm going to call error empty. It's going to be equal to a string. And I'm going to do the same thing with error email. So I'm going to say we have error email. And inside these strings here, I can actually include some PHP code. So I can actually open up my PHP tags inside the string, just like we did with HTML inside the PHP code. And say we have a PHP code, I want to echo whatever we have inside 
this variable up here called error empty. So we're gonna say we have error empty, echo it, and close the PHP tags at the end here, which means that right now, the JavaScript variable error empty is going to be equal to the PHP variable, which is error empty. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it below here, and say we want to check for error email inside the second one. So now we have some JavaScript variables, which is equal to the PHP variables from up here. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually check if one of these were actually true, meaning that there is an error inside our script. And then we want to show the error message inside the front page. So what I'm going to do at the bottom here is I'm going to create an if statement inside JavaScript and say if error empty, which is the variable we have up here, is equal to true, like so. Then I want to do something inside the curly brackets. Now what I want to do here is I want to have a selector and I want to select any kind of inputs inside my front page at the bottom here that needs to do something when there's any kind of empty inputs. So if we were to actually go back in here, I want to say I want to select an ID called mail-name and then do something to it. So I'm going to say dot add class which is a jQuery function we have that actually adds a class from inside our style sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a class called input error. So I'm gonna say parentheses, input dash error, which again, if I were to go inside the style sheet, you guys can see that down here, I have a styling called input error, which basically just gives our input a box shadow of some kind of red color. So we can see some kind of error message. So what I want to do as well is I don't just want to check for one empty input. I want to check if all of them, if there was one of them that was just empty. So I'm gonna say after the mail dash name, I want to say comma, ID mail dash email, which was the second input we had, comma. Then I want to check for the third one, which was the gender. So I'm gonna say mail dash gender. Well, actually in this case, the gender cannot be empty because I were to go back inside my example here, we need to have some kind of data, either male or female. So maybe we should just focus on the first, second, and the third one inside this error message here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a, not male gender, but male message. And then I want to add the class called input error, which basically turns everything red. So after we did this, we can actually go ahead and check if we also had an error inside our email. So if we were to go down to the next line, I can create a if statement, which says error mail inside the condition up here. I'm gonna say if it's equal to true, then I want to do whatever's inside the curly brackets, which in this case is going to be kind of the same thing here. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste it in. And I only want to have this error message inside the email input. So I'm just gonna delete the other ones we have in here. So I'm just gonna delete them like so. So now we're only gonna get the error message inside the email. So after we did this, we also need to check if we had any kind of success. So if we were to go down to the next line here and say we have an if statement that checks if error empty was equal to false, meaning that there was no errors inside, you know, he actually typed in all the inputs, then I want to do something else instead. Now I also want to check if the error mail is equal to false, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and say false. Then I want to do something inside the curly brackets. Now in this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove all the values from inside the inputs inside my website because if I were to go back inside the demo that I created before this episode, if I were to type something and create a valid email address, so I'm just gonna say at gmail.com, write something down here. You guys can see once I do actually click the send button, everything else inside the inputs gets deleted. And I want to do that inside my JavaScript code here. So I'm gonna go and go inside my if statement and create a selector and say I want to, well, basically select everything from inside my if statement up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the selector here. And I want to say that there's a new value called val parentheses, which is equal to nothing. So I'm just gonna include a couple of double quotes in here and just write nothing inside of it. So right now it's gonna be equal to nothing, okay? Now before we can actually finish off the episode, there's one more thing we need to do inside the JavaScript code here because right now if we were to actually get something wrong, so if we were to just type something and leave one empty, click it, 
Then you guys can see we have a bunch of stylings applied to each of these input fields inside the form. Now, when I want to click the input again, so if I were to actually fill this incorrectly, like so, and actually send it, then you guys can see all the stylings, you know, all the red colors disappeared. And right now inside our input, which is up here, the one you just saw was the demo. If I were to do the same thing, all the red colors, even though I did everything correctly the second time, would still be inside the form. So we need to get rid of all the stylings we applied inside our code here when we said add class input error. So we need to remove these input errors again if I did actually use the form correctly the second time. So right before everything else inside the script tags, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a selector and I'm gonna go ahead and select every single input from inside the form. So I'm actually just gonna paste what we have down here again and delete what I just wrote up here like so and also select the gender just to make sure we have it selected. So I'm gonna say hashtag male dash gender. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write a jQuery function called remove class. Like so, parentheses, semicolon. And I want to remove the class called input dash error from all these different inputs in here. So now they're all gonna be emptied. And then it's gonna go ahead and check again if it should include these stylings down here again. So now that we have this, let's actually go ahead and check out what we have inside our website. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh and try and click send email before anything else. As you guys can see, we have a error message that says we need to fill in all fields. And if we were to type something without having a proper email address, you guys can see we now get write a valid email address. Oh, but we didn't actually get any kind of red stylings here, so we need to check out why that is. Ah, okay, we wrote error mail inside our if statement. We need to write error email, like so. Let's actually go back and check it again. If we were to refresh, write something. And now you guys can see we actually get the error message inside the email field. Now, before I end off this episode, let me actually show you guys one more thing, which is something I know you guys will ask me about if I don't show it. Now, inside our front page, inside the form, right now we actually have an action and a method said and inside the jQuery code up here, we did actually decide to prevent it from actually running, you know, the action and the method. So the question is, can I actually delete these and still have this working inside my website? Yes, you can. So if I were to go back inside the website, refresh, you guys can see that it will actually still run the actual, you know, PHP file and get some kind of result out from it. Now, why should you have this inside your code then? Well, let's say I'm, a guy who's up to no good, I'm going to your website and looking at your form inside the developer tool and seeing there's an action and a method, then it might lead suspicion away from the fact that you're using JavaScript or jQuery to actually do this inside the form. Since JavaScript and jQuery is, like I said, not as safe as using PHP code. So if you were to actually include this in here, even though we're not using it, it's still a good idea to have it. Now, this is one of the ways you can create validation inside a form. And before we end off the episode completely, in case you guys are interested, I'd like to go through what we did here just to make sure that you guys didn't get confused along the way about which specifically inside the code does what. So just to kind of go over the thing again, you know, not actually writing it, but just going over the code we have here. Inside the front page, we have a form. Inside the form, we have the inputs or the data that we want to do something with inside our website. Now, typically when you have a form and you want to do something with data, you use PHP code to actually do this. So what we did here was using JavaScript or jQuery is we went ahead and told it to not run the actual HTML function here or the method and action that passes on the data to some kind of document. Instead, we do this using JavaScript or jQuery up here, which takes the data and passes it on using Ajax, which is down here, meaning that we load the PHP document, which is actually handling the data without having to refresh the browser. So we're actually loading the PHP document without actually loading it. So it's just running in the background using Ajax. So inside the PHP document, we actually run the error handlers, which checks if everything was filled in correctly or if there was some kind of error message. And then at the end here, we simply check the data and see if there was any kind of error message. Then we want to pass on the visual change for the user inside the browser using JavaScript or jQuery, which again leads me to answer another question in case you guys might ask it. No, you should not only use JavaScript or jQuery in order to validate forms inside a website. 
you need to do it using something like PHP as well. Otherwise, people can bypass your validation or your error handlers inside your form, okay? So after we do this, we can then do a visual change, which is what we see inside the browser using you know, colors or something, uh, which lets our user know from a usability point of view that this is not working, okay? So again, JavaScript and jQuery form validation is only for usability point of view. If you want to actually have any kind of security, you need to use something like PHP. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.